Hey guys, I'm going to be making our lampwork glass bonbon beads today because we have an order and it's a real simple design so I thought it would be fun to show you guys how it's done. There we go. All right, so the first thing you need to do uh, ahead of time is you have to make the little spiral twists that we use to make the um, chocolate swirls on top of the bonbons. So for us to be able to do that, we take two full-size rods. One's a dark chocolate brown and one's a white. And I'm just gonna kind of melt them both until they form a nice chunky gather at the end. I like to work at very low temps to prevent scorching and uh, boiling the glass. So it takes a little while, but I prefer to take my time and do it right. All right, we've got a good gather on the white one and a good gather on the brown. Now we're gonna bring them together and just melt it a bit more, get it real nice and soft. Okay. I like to take a real quick little snap to give me something to hold on to. I just flatten out a piece there. You can see with my tweezers, I just flattened out a piece on the end. That'll give me something to grip when I'm ready to stretch it. And now I gotta get back in there and remelt it because I took it out of the flame and it, it got cooled off a bit. All right, now it's all nice and soft and droopy. I take my little piece that I made at the end and we're gonna stretch and twist at the same time. And as we stretch and twist, woo, you gotta kind of do it fast so you can, and sometimes you can kind of get a little bit more action out of it by keeping it in the flame as you twist and pull. But since I took it out of the flame to show you, you guys can see the difference. This is where I was consistently pulling and then, whoops, <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> but that's how a twist is made. I'll make another one and show you guys. All right. Got that melty goodness going on. All right, make my little handle. That's a good droopy gather and stretch and twist. There we go. See, now I've made a cute little spiral that I'm able to use to make the decoration on top of the bonbon. So it's cooled down enough. I just put it in the flame so that I can cut the end off break it away with the heat. And then I'm just gonna set that aside. The next step, I've got just a regular sized mandrel and a very soft pink uh, glass. It's soft glass that I'm working with today. Heating up the mandrel and the glass rod at the same time. Again, I'm gonna get that nice big gather that I'd like to have before I apply the glass. And the first touch is always most important to me because I like my footprint to be nice and clean, especially around the hole of the bead. So you just have to give it a very gentle touch so that you don't get messy edges. And so I'm adding the first little layer there. That's gonna be the outside hole of the glass bonbon. I'm going to let that solidify a little while I get a, bed, a nice big gather again. And then next to it, I'm going to put on another strip of glass. 
I usually, to make the bonbons, use about two or three uh, strips of glass the length of the rod um, to make sure it's nice and fat. Love a big fat bonbon. All right. And then this third strip that I'm putting on is going to be the other hole of the bead. So again, I'm trying to get, lay a nice, clean trail of glass. Give those holes nice, clean edges. All right, so I've got the kind of base of my bonbon made. Pretty easy. All right, I'm just going to let that kind of pull together and get another gather up and going. I don't feel like this edge is quite even enough, so I'm going to add a little more glass to even it up. And again, let that kind of melt in. All right, now that I've got the base layer, I'm just going to be adding enough glass to build it up to the right size that I want. And I just try to kind of shape as I go. I find it's easier. Of course, you can kind of melt and shape at the end, but if you can keep your shape consistent and kind of form it as you go, your life's just easier. Yes, Otis, I hear you meowing, but I'm playing with fire right now. Alright, almost about the size that I want. I like to make it slightly bigger through the middle because that's going to give me the better bonbon shape that I want. All right, and then at this point, I'm kind of giving it a nice, good melt. But then I'm going to take the ball of glass out of the fire for a second to let it get some form. And then before it cools too much, I'm just going to add one big strip of glass around the middle, kind of like a spiral around Saturn. But it gives it that kind of like chocolatey lump at the top. And then what I do, this is the last step of the shape, I'm going to heat that bottom part real nice and hot. And then I use one of my shapers to flatten the bottom out. And you can see now it's got that perfect bonbon shape. Now before it cools too much, I have to keep that little bonbon warm. And then I take my spiral of glass, keep that bonbon warm, and get my little spiral heated up enough that I can get it attached. And then I just start and slowly start to twist that around to make the chocolate spiral on top of the bonbon. to do two or three twists around and then when I come to the front edge I bring the chocolate down to the front so it looks like it's dripping off the chocolate. I separate it with the flame and then I use the flame to just round that little edge out like a dot so it just looks like dripping chocolate. Then I'm going to give it a really good melt and let that uh, spiral kind of melt down and get into all the creases so that it's not going to have any weak points. Also, it makes it look melty, like chocolate. Kind of the whole point of this. Almost got that. I'm just gonna have to shape that part a little for my preference. All right, and for the cherry on top, we put a cherry on top. <laughs> Imagine that. So we just take a little stringer of red, again, keeping your bonbon warm, and just add a tiny little cherry on top of the glass bonbon. And then use the flame to round that out nice and good. Give it a good little round cherry shape. And there you go. You're taking a bath. Okay, that's great. <laughs> I'm recording now. But see, that's our little bonbon now. 
I'm going to tuck it into the heat blanket for now so that we can put everything at the end of the night and batch and meal it in the kiln. And while we're at it, let me show you how to make a brownie. You can take a bath. I don't care. <laughs> you just don't have to announce it when I'm doing a video. Well, I didn't know. Well, you do now. All right. So, making a little brownie. I need a chocolate rod. Okay. Oop, I'm shooting, shooting glass everywhere. Do I have white stringers ready? Yes, I do. So, for the brownies, would you come let Otis out? He keeps meowing, honey. No, they won't see you. Besides, I'm the center of attention here. They only care about me. Okay, I'm gonna make myself some uh, white stringers before I start the uh, brownie because I like to have, I like to have it really thin, not just any old size. So to make a stringer is pretty simple. I've got two white rods here. They're about eight millimeters around, which is the standard size. I'm going to form a nice gather on both ends of the two rods and then smush those bad boys together. You can see how they're kind of just melting together. So now I'm going to heat them up nice and good so it's one big globby gather there in the middle. You can tell when it's ready it's going to be a real rounded blob, no edges and it just is kind of one solid piece. I'm gonna bring it out of the flame, let it cool just a little, and then slowly start to stretch it. And as it cools, you kind of can start to see when you need to keep pulling and when you need to slow down. I'm happy with that length and width, so I use the flame to cut it off of one edge of one of the rods. And then with my tweezers, I'm gonna hold this edge so I can use the flame to break it off of the other rod. I'm just gonna set that up there so it can cool while I'm shaping my brownie. And with it being so thin, it will, it will uh, cool very quickly, so it'll be ready by the time I need it. All right, so for brownie, I'm gonna start the same way as I did with a bonbon, except I'm using chocolate glass instead. This is my the lighter dark, a uh, lighter brown that I use for the chocolates. All right, I'm getting a nice hot mandrel and a nice big brown gather of glass. And starting my little footprint for the top of my brownie there. For the brownies, since I want them to be kind of more rectangular, I usually do three to four uh, base layers of glass on the mandrel. Okay, so that's three layers, and I don't think I want to do a fourth. It'll be a little too big, but it's still not quite as oblong as I like, so I'm going to add kind of like a thin half layer to the bottom. So we did kind of three and a half to get the length that I want. Now I'm just gonna, again, build that up. I'm trying to keep it kind of tube shaped because once I want to turn it into a rectangle shape, it the more even the tube is, the easier it'll be to make that rectangle. I'm trying to keep the glass pretty melted and compliant. I don't want to let it harden up at all yet. Um, not till I'm ready to start shaping and embellishing. So right now I'm just adding extra layers of glass. I'm pretty happy with the clean edges on, on the side of each of the, the ends. And I need to add some more glass to the middle though. Well, my bead is starting to get pulled just a little, so I'm going to pull my rod out. 
and give that glass a chance to heat up again so that I'm not getting any stress points or uh, bubbles, things that could cause imperfections later. Keep that nice and hot. It's just about full magma. Okay. I'm just going to use a little bit of glass here and there to kind of make sure I have about the shape that I want. I want clean edges and even and even consistency. Okay. That's just about what I want. All right, while I keep that nice and hot, I'm gonna grab my little mashers, make sure the glass is fully heated, so when I go to shape, it won't give me any trouble. I'm gonna take those mashers and smash. Imagine that, using my mashers to smash, and then do it again on the other side. So, try and keep it. All right, see there? Now you can see I've got a little kind of rectangle, which is perfect for making my brownies. Okay, I'm going to keep that hot, and then I'm going to get my, oops, and drop my stringer. All right, so now I've got my white stringer, okay? And for these, because it's a stringer that's so thin, you got to be working way out here in the flame. You don't want to put it right in the flame. It will melt way too fast, and it will be hard to control. So what I like to do is kind of, Soften it up a little, and of course, keeping my bead warm so it's ready to accept the glass. And then I just gently bend it to do one stripe across. Same thing. Just hot enough to listen to me, but not too hot to become unruly. Okay, there's two stripes. Get one more on there. All right. So now we've got three little stripes on there. You can see. So what I'm going to do now is really melt that in. And that one is bulged just a little. I got to put that in place the way that I want it. Okay. So now I'm going to really melt those lines in there. So they become part of the glass, not just embellishments on the outside, but really melted into the brown part. And on the outer edges, I'm going to use my mashers again to really push the white glass into the brown glass. Keep it that rectangle shape that I wanted. Sometimes you'll get a little gap in your stripe. And this, that's what happened on this one. So I'm just adding a touch of glass there to make sure there's no gaps. Okay. All right. Now that I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to really superheat the top of the brownie. Actually, I'm going to shape that just a little more. Sometimes I can be nitpicky. All right. I'm taking, making that nice and hot. So it's pretty much just liquid magma at this point. And then I use my rake to drag. Oops, it's sticking. There we go. It's always a challenge to keep your tools from sticking. I'm going to use my bigger rake. All right. Got that nice and hot again. And then I can use my rake to drag the chocolate design down. So it's making like a spiral on the, the stripe shape. And then I pull up. All right, and then heat it one more time. So I can pull it down on this edge.
So now it's kind of got that zigzag chocolatey pattern. I'm kind of going to give just a little bit of pull on this side too, just to accentuate the design a little. All right, there we go. Now, really quick, I'll show you. You can see it's got that zigzaggy pattern now, right? I'm gonna give it another heat up because I like to clean up those rake marks as I pulled the rake through the design. Sometimes it leaves little indentations in the glass and I like to round those out. But as I do that, I'm gonna shape just a little because by moving the design around, I lost my rectangle shape a little bit. So we're just gonna clean up the edges. Right, we melt that in there and get it nice and smooth like frosting on a brownie. Almost got it. Oh yeah, that's coming together nice. All right, I'm really satisfied with that. So now I'm gonna put a little flour on my brownie. So with a little red stringer, I'm gonna put a little triangle of three red dots. I'm a little shaky, so this part's kind of hard for me because I take medicines that make me really shaky. So that's why Lila does most of this stuff. Okay, dot number two. And then dot number three. There we go. Now, so I've got three little dots and a triangle of red. I'm going to heat those up real good and then smash them down. Those are gonna be the petals of the flower. Just our little design on our brownie. I'm not loving that petal, I'm gonna make an adjustment because I'm nitpicky sometimes. There we go, that's more like it. All right, heat that up. Smash it down. All right, I'll flatten my little flower. And now I just need a little spot of green for the middle of the flower. green for the flower in the middle, rounding it out. And here it is, you can't see the colors because they're still so hot. Those The flower is gonna turn bright red once it cools. So that's kind of an idea. I'll show you when it's done what they actually look like after they've been annealed. Round out that dot a little more though. There you go. Some of our fastest and easiest little glass beads that we make, but they're so super cute.